Uh, roster is continuously improving. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about uh, the guys that redshirted last year that are that are coming back. You know, we don't need to keep revisiting that, but it's nice to look on this sheet right here and and see uh, 24 seniors, and a lot of them are redshirt seniors. You know, we talked about Derek and Mulba and Keith and Jared Williams and and Braylon Jones and. You know, a lot of these guys that that are on the sheet right here are 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 older and 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 going to make uh, this team here pretty good. First first recruiting win of the day is uh, Marquez Stevenson. Okay, so you know I really want to commend that young man for for vetting the process the the appropriate way. He did it just like Josh Jones did it last year. And you know, seeing the success that Josh had this year, he got better and better throughout the course of the year. <clears throat> You know, uh, still played almost 700 snaps, even though he didn't play in the last three games because of the high ankle, which I, I supported. He gave us everything that he could and, and uh, has positioned himself into being a high draft pick. So uh, Speedy's announced today that he's, that he's coming back as well. That adds another fifth-year senior, um, you know, and a pretty daggum productive one. So, you know, recruiting win number one, you know. So, uh, you know, excited about him and, again, just can't, uh, uh, commend him enough for for how he, uh, you know, went about this process and and you know took it all in and we had a lot of meetings with him with him and his family and uh, he believes in what we're doing believes in what what we're go what we got going on and throughout the course of his junior year I thought he showed a ton of improvement and uh, once again being able to be in the same offense two years in a row uh, he's excited about that and. Uh, those guys can't wait to get started here January 13th moving forward. So uh, signing day, um, you know, we, we, uh, we, had, we had 23 available. I, I figured we'd sign somewhere around 15, and we did. Uh, so got 15 guys here, um, nine, nine on offense, uh, five on defense. Um, another Australian punter, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Of the 15, you know, eight of them will be able to join us in midterm. Okay, so, you know, and I go through the eight, you know, three of them are high school guys, uh, you know, uh, Sofin, the quarterback, <clears throat> uh, which we're, you know, excited about him. And, and, you know, he had a heck of a year this year. Uh, moved in from Jersey, um, you know, is some of these names I'm going to butcher now. I'm just going to go ahead and prepare you all for that until I start getting nicknames for him and all that stuff I'm, and get to know him a little a bit better I'm gonna but he's he's uh, I've never had a kid that 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 that's been here as much as as he has okay so I think his season finished up you know uh finished up in in uh, mid-November and he was up here for about two three weeks sitting in every meeting uh watching every practice <clears throat> uh awesome family awesome kid his mom played basketball here uh you know he'll he'll be here in January uh, was up for the Houston Touchdown Club Player of the Year. I mean, the dude's pretty good, and uh, is gonna gonna have a chance to be to be really special. Um, uh, our our punter, you know, Lane uh, came in from Australia. Uh, you know, he he's he's uh, he he was on campus a couple weeks ago. I, I don't want to call him a high school guy. You know, he's a he's got he's got four years of five year five for four. He's a true freshman, but. He's not a high school guy because he's 25 years old. He's another one of these uh, older guys that that uh, that we're that we're we're pretty excited about. And then James Faminu, okay, the London guy. You can't call him a high school guy either. He's 20 years old. He's played like some semi-pro ball over there in London. He's just a big dude. He's six six three fifty and came to our camp. He rolled through with a bunch of guys from London through our camp, and Brandon really liked him and 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 added him as well. So those three guys will be here. Uh, in uh, in January, um, one grad transfer, uh, Giovanni Stewart, obviously pretty familiar with him, uh, recruited him out of uh, Katy High School. You know, won a state championship for them. Uh, was with us there at at, at at West Virginia. Was a three year starter there. Played in forty some games. Uh, Kyle Porter's best friend. You know, so that played a big part in it. And you know, wanted to come uh, uh, to back home, you know, to the city of Houston and be able to finish his career up and get started with his graduate degree. Uh, so we're, we're excited about him coming in, in, in December or in January. And then we got four junior college guys. Uh, we got uh, Little Tank, okay, Nathaniel Dell. He's all of about 
150 pounds, but he's a three for three guy from Independence Community College, can really fly. We wanted speed. We wanted, we needed more speed and we got it with him. Uh, you know, so he's coming in and he's a three for three guy. So he'll be here in December. He's a high school qualifier. <clears throat> we'll be here in December and uh, we'll uh, have three years to play. Um, Malik Robinson, uh, linebacker uh, uh, out of Fort Scott, originally out of Georgia. Uh, went to North Carolina for a little while. Uh, really, really a good player that, that comes in and give us uh, a lot of depth, that linebacker. <clears throat> We're getting old at linebacker, too. You know, you played a lot of younger guys and you had an older guy. Those younger guys are now, you know, Donnie's a, a junior, Curvin's a junior, Terrence is a senior. Add another junior, so we're getting older there. Jace Rogers from Northwest Mississippi. Uh, he was committed to us at that previous place I was at. Uh, didn't make it, went to Northwest Mississippi. Uh, not a big guy, but is, uh, is really athletic, really physical, will trigger. Um, you know, is a playmaking guy, uh, is, a, is a guy that, <clears throat> that uh, you know, uh, uh, is a return guy as well. Uh, just, a, just a baller, playmaker, all, all the rest of that. Um, and then, um, where's the other one? The last one is Cedric Williams. Okay, big said he was the defensive player of the year in this conference in Texas as a, as a D tackle, that, which is impressive to me. I mean, usually those defensive, overall defensive player of the year guys, those are guys that, you know, have the stats. You know, the ball always goes to the linebackers or he got into about four or five uh, uh, big interception returns or, or something like that. So for him to get uh, defensive player of the year in this JUCO league in Texas, which has got a whole bunch of players in it, uh, he's originally out of Louisiana. He'll be here in, in January as well. Uh, and then on top of that, you know, you got seven, you got seven high school guys. Um, <clears throat> You know, a lot of local guys, you know, Derek Bowman, O'Lyman at Magnolia, uh, Darius uh, Ed Edmonds, uh, receiver at Atascacita. You know, all these guys had great years, you know, their high school years. You got from uh, O'Lyman up in Dallas. Uh, Chidozi, you know, spent a lot of time with him, Houston area guy, Houston touchdown club, uh, finalist player of the year. Uh, I, 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 the rumors he wants to wear number 10. You know, which I said, you sure? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I can handle it. I go, okay, uh, we're, we're with you there, Dot. Um, Dylan Robinson, another receiver that's been committed to us for a long time, had a heck of a year, player of the year in that conference, Had could have went to a lot of different places. Uh, Stacy Sneed got, got in on him late. We needed a, a back that's kind of a different kind of back. He's a twitchy guy that, that – that uh, makes a lot, uh, made a lot of plays, had a lot of options, had about 20 offers up there. Uh, Trevante Sylvester out of Bow Bridge, uh, in the middle of nowhere in Louisiana. He's he's about he's about six six, uh, 225 basketball guy, uh, but is real physical. He's going to grow into a big human being, uh, be a big tight end for us. We're able to develop him just based on the fact that that Christian had such a such a big time year. The only other thing I want to mention, I take questions for this, is, is let's not forget uh, in the summertime, you know, one reason we only had 23 scholarships is, is we moved two of them forward. Uh, but we also signed a couple of guys in the summer that went backwards. Okay. And there's a lot of different signing periods. You got one now, you got one, uh, you got one in uh, February, and then you can sign them uh, consistently uh, after that a lot. But these five guys who all redshirted, and we've talked about these guys a lot, I just really haven't giving you their backgrounds, okay? So there's some things right there that uh, can tell you who these backgrounds are, and it's, it's really pretty impressive when you, you got a guy like Yabi who's going to be excited about uh, being able to be treated like everybody else being eligible, okay? And all five of them are the same way, but being eligible, you know, just, just a big-time guy out of high school, played at Alabama, is going to be three for three and a redshirt sophomore, Kevin Clements. Uh, Juco kid that went to Minnesota and just didn't work out for him there, so he came here. He's going to be two for two uh, and, and uh, a, a redshirt junior. Uh, uh, Hassan from down the road here at High, Hightower, uh, redshirted. He's going to be three for three. Uh, Bryson Jackson, uh, wide receiver that went to TCU right up the road in Humble. He's, gonna, uh, he's redshirted. He's going to be three for three. And then Marcus Jones who played his first two years at Troy, was an All-American DB, all-conference guy, um, you know, played both ways, just a dynamic player. Uh, you know, he redshirted. He's good to go at two for two. So let's not forget those five because those five count, you know. And 
you know, they, they count and, and they spent their one term and residency and is now excited about being a part of this 2020 uh, season moving forward. So a lot to be excited about. We're not done. We got about eight to 10 more that we'll go get here, whether that's February or the summer. I don't care when it is. We'll get the best ones to come in and play. Uh, and, you know, whether they're, you know, whether they're high school guys in February, whether they're JUCO guys, February, summer, um, you know, there's been plenty of times where guys get eligible and they're three for three JUCO guys late or, or just get players in here that need to sit. We'll, we'll, we'll evaluate that as well. Dane, I was curious, just the last couple of weeks, it looked like you guys were able to flip a couple of guys that you were interested in. And then also someone like a Dylan Robinson seemed like a lot of schools were going to make try to come after him late. Just what y'all were able to do those last couple of weeks to keep not only this class intact, but to, to add some key parts. Yeah, I don't remember if it was you or whoever. You're like, how in the world are you going to recruit on four and eight? I go, it's going to be easy because everybody that we're recruiting, we have relationships with, and there's a lot of people that want to be a part of what we're doing. So, you know, whether it was hanging on to guys that that were getting recruited or going after guys that 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 were committed elsewhere, uh, I wasn't worried about that. And you know, there's a couple we didn't get, and there's a couple that that chose not to sign that we're still going to be able to recruit, you know, that that's, that's just part of the process. And, and, you know, I felt like we're in a good shape to be able to close a lot of these guys out. Dana, what does it say? You, you've touched on it. What does it say about your program that a guy like Marquez gets evaluated, chooses to stay one more year with you? What does it say about what you're doing and where you're headed? I just think it's, you know, we, we, we've had a plan, you know, and, and, whether people agreed with it or whether they didn't, we've had a plan and we've never wavered from our plan. We've never, we've never second guessed anything that we're doing. We continue to put our head down and coach hard and, you know, was able to win a couple of games, you know, late was, you know, close in a couple other ones, but we kept competing and we, we, we had a plan and we knew what we were going to do with this 2020 roster. And, uh, the next steps coaching them hard and, comp uh, developing competition at each spot and, and continue to, to, to get better, to position ourselves to be able to win in 2020. <clears throat> Dana, throughout your career, you've shown a willingness to bring in JUCO recruits. What do these guys do for your program? Well, if there's needs, there's, uh, that's, that's a good way to do it. You know, and, and you know, by being able to bring in four of them midterm, I think that's, that's critical. Um, you know, one of them's three for three, the rest of them are, three for two, but if you got a plan as far as, you know, wanting to get an older guy out of position, that's, that's the main way to do it, you know, and, <clears throat> you know, being able to get a couple of them with three years is, 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 is beneficial, you know, a couple of them are, are two years, but there are needs in those areas, so uh, if you feel like you can get the right ones, take them, if you don't, then don't, you know, so I think that's the biggest thing is, is don't overreact and, and, take a ton of them because then you're just replacing a lot of those guys. So I think what this class shows you right here is, is, is uh, you know, getting a couple guys that can help you right now, but, uh, you know, getting guys that had to sit and now you got different type players in your program and then, um, you know, mixing in some, some JC guys that'll be there for a while as well. And then, <clears throat> and then there's the grad transfer deal. You know, I, 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 I wanted Giovanni to be in this program. You know, he's a, a local guy, Katie High School guy. He's, uh, you know, familiar with what we do and, and um, you know, excited about having him a part of it as well. I just think you take a combination of all that stuff, and the bottom line is is get the best ones that you can get. And, and as long as they're a fit, then, then don't worry about the rest. Dana, it's clear offensive line was a big point for you guys in this class. It probably still is moving forward. But how important is it to add a couple of the guys in Bowman and uh, Ugana and, uh, as well as the long-term guy with Faminu? <clears throat> Yeah, you know, there there is uh some discussions on that, you know, <clears throat> you know, you, I mean, heck, we got when you get Jared and Braylon back, you don't need to go get grad transfers. You don't need to get two for two JC guys. Okay? So those guys bring a lot of snaps under their belt that will serve as the older guys. You know, we were able to you know, develop guys with, you know, like like Jack and and Max and Patrick, you know, because of necessity, they had to play. So, you know, that to me alleviates the fact that you need to go find some three for three JC guys. So the best thing that you can do for the future is, is to get high school guys. 
<clears throat> so the last the last six old linemen that we've taken are all high school guys and you know here in two three four years I mean those are going to be the guys that are that you're going to be playing with so um, I don't I don't see a need in getting older guys on the offensive line to to add to the fact that we already got five seniors on that roster right there so <clears throat> you know I I get the best ones we can get but the best way to to do O line is to get them in your program develop them not have to hopefully not have to play them next year you know when they're true freshmen and uh, just let them develop the right way and you know that 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 gives you depth now and it, it it builds for what the future is we still got a few more spots we'll probably go out there and get a couple more linemen as well Dana how did you guys become aware of Feminu which one Feminu the kid from London he's the London guy so he he was a part of a group that um I know him by James and how big, <laughs> James from London. Okay, <laughs> right. So he, but he was a part of a little travel group in the summer. You know, the, the all the Australian kids went on a little tour from like Memphis through Texas, and you know, so those guys rolled through here. So that's the first time we met Lane, and then that the London group, and I can't remember how many of he was actually there. You know, took a little tour through Texas too. I know they were like TCU, SMU, I think Baylor, and then down into Houston and. Just look, I mean, you know, he's a project guy. I mean, I don't have a whole lot of video on him, but he's 20. He's only been playing for two years, and, you know, he's, it's, 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 it's going to be an adjustment for him. But he gets here in January. He's a smart kid and, you know, has five years to play. And, and, and he went through our camp, and Brandon thought he moved really well. So he's a big person that moves good. So you got to kind of evaluate them based on, you know, being good in camp, but he's big and smart and, and, uh, you know, we may turn around here in four years and have another Sebastian Vollmer, you know. I mean, that's, that's what Seabass did when he was here 10 years ago. Nobody knew about him either. Dana, there's a lot with, with pro kick Australia, uh, the familiarity a lot of the schools here in the States are looking at. Is that kind of the direction? Is, is that a position and, and a style that you see a lot of schools go to and did that factor in? Or was it more of like did Dane help recruit this guy or, or kind of how was that <clears throat> process? Well, it's, a, it's an interesting process, really. I mean, you, you call the guy over there and you say you're in the market for one, you know, and then he takes – what your school is and where it's at and tries to make it the best fit, you know. So, um, you know, obviously having Dane here, uh, a lot of familiarity with what's going on back there. And <laughs> Dane's been such a great ambassador for our, our university, our athletic department, our football program, and he's been a pretty good ambassador for Australian punters too. You know, he's pretty vocal about that. So I uh, had Lane in on the visit. You know, his mom came in, his – his uh, fiance came in, and you know Dane was was uh, right there with his fiance, touring him around for 48 hours, and so uh, those guys kind of hit it off. And you know, as, as much as much success as Dane has had here, then you know Lane feels pretty good about it moving forward. <clears throat> uh, with Chidozi, uh first, what kind of player is he, and? Uh, I guess how are you guys able to? I know he was. I think he was committed here before you got here, and then how you how are you guys able to kind of get him back in the boat? Yeah, I just think he was. You know, he wanted it, 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 and you know, I don't want to compare him to anybody, and you know what I'm talking about when I'm saying that. But <clears throat> you know, I mean, that's he's a damn good player now, and you know, he's. Uh, I think the the stat that Coach McDowell told me was. You know, he played in, I think, 44 high school games. You know, I, you know, whatever, 16, what's that, 16? And you can play it in 16, right? So what's that, help me at math, 34, 32, 64. You can, play in 60, you can play in 64 if you make the championship game all four years. He played in 55. I think that's the right number, which that's impressive. I mean, that's playing since you were a freshman. So he's basically like started every game since he was a freshman. So he's played at a pretty high level for a long time. Uh, liked University of Houston, um, you know, coaching staff changed. And so we had to get in there and get to know him and he had to get to know us and uh, we have developed a really good relationship with him and his family. And, you know, we're excited about him being one of the 
five or six Houston area guys that that want to stay here. And uh, every one of those every one of those guys had other options and could have went to a lot of different places. And you know, those are the ones that really wanted it was pretty vocal and really wanted to stay here. So those are the guys we want. Dana, the quarterback, uh, Masood, what, what caught your eye about him when you were looking at him? I'll tell you what caught my eye on him is, you know, he's, he's a 6'2", 210-pound guy, okay? So he's got he's, – he's not he's, – he's, he's big and he's put together pretty well. He was committed to Rutgers as a safety. <clears throat> he's physical. And he moved to Houston because he, he moved in with his grandparents down here who are wonderful people and wanted to play Texas high school football. And so he came to our camp in the summer and he's walking around with, with in gym shorts and a shirt, a t-shirt and one tennis shoe and a boot, you know, and he's flipping this ball around and I'm looking, he's going through warmups. I'm like, what's this dude doing? You know, and that's the quarterback. So I go over there, I start talking to him a little bit. I go, what's wrong with your foot? He's like, <clears throat> really nothing's wrong with it. I just want to protect it, you know, make sure it's 100% for the season. I go, all right, so this is going to be interesting. He went through the entire camp. I'm talking taking full speed drops and, you know, and he just slinging that thing. So, I mean, that caught my eye. His, the accuracy was good. He came back later in the summer without the boot and, you know, looked even better, you know. So, uh, just he's – He's not a guy a lot of people know about just based on, you know, being in Jersey and transferring down here, but uh, we're, we're glad we got him. I'm curious, what, what do you value most in a quarterback from a trait perspective? <clears throat> uh, there's about 10 of them that you got to kind of take into consideration. Um, you know, but I, I've, the, the love for the game is important. You know, and I, I, I talk about coaches' kids a lot, you know, and <clears throat> Kingsbury was a coach's kid, and Graham Harrell was a coach's kid, Case Keenan was a coach's kid, and uh, Clint Trickett, and Will Greer, you know, and, and you know, that, that, that's the coach's kid aspect of it is, is the love for the game, okay? And, you know, Safan has that. You can just tell, I mean, I've never seen him without a ball. And who, in, when he's in high school, comes up, to the university and sits in every meeting for about a month prior to enrolling. I mean, so a kid loves the game. Um, you know, accuracy is big. Arm strength is, is big. Athleticism is big. Keeping the play alive with mobility is big. But just flat out love for the game, I think, is probably number one. Dana, uh, just wanted to go back uh, you mentioned you know Jared Williams is, is the plan right now to to apply for some type of medical redshirt is he eligible for that and and then also <laughs> since the season ended and you've had a chance to do exit you know interviews and player talks uh, some of them graduated have you gotten definitive you know I, I know Derek and those guys have said they were coming back but I mean in terms of what you're expecting I don't know why you'd even ask that question after what I've just said you know so I obviously feel pretty good about all those guys but Jared, what's, what's the process? Yeah, there's there's a rule, and he there there's a hard cut rule, and he he fits the rule, and so you still gotta you still gotta waiver it, but he fits the rule, so I'm 100 percent sure that he's coming back. 